Hi, I'm Peter Kelmstrom of Kelmstrom.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I will continue working on my recurring tasks in Excel solution. Last time we got to here, we had a, an app that um, managed to save data into Excel. And we have two tables, one tasks here and one templates. And the thing I want to do now is two things. First of all, I want to modify the way dates are stored. Now they're stored in um, text format up here. And uh, Excel wants it, of course, like this in uh, the date format. And then also I want to add another column for the number of minutes worked. But I do want to keep it as simple as possible. I don't want the user to have to type in the number of minutes worked. So that's what we're going to achieve in this demonstration. Now it actually saved in the right data. So I might have been messing around with this. Let's see what we can do. Here is the save function, of course. So this patch is there and the date format short date. But now it recognizes that this is a date format. But let's actually just do the now there. Take away that date format because then Excel will recognize it as a date. And then we can just fill this up. So we have so all the cells are now in date format. So let's go back to Power Apps and refresh the data source. So let's try it again. And now it should be adding. Yeah, everything's fine. Great. For adding the extra column, I'm just going to insert here a new column called minutes worked. And that is, of course, going to be a number. And then in order to make this code that I have run as it should, I need to go in and edit that code and just put another column in. Because otherwise, it will, when I'm adding a new task to the task table, I'm putting empty values here to these cells. And that needs to match up. So that's the first thing we need to do. Just edit this, the script. And now I'm just pushing another column there, which is the minutes worked, which is going to be empty. I can actually push a zero there. But Excel should figure out that that is a number. So let's do that and save the script. And then let's put some of the templates in here for today. Today is the 30th of 0630. Let's do it for all of them. Just copy. There we go. And now we run the script. And now you see that the, the dates got pushed away. So that's what it's supposed to happen. And here. Yeah, we have some zeros and you can see that those are actually numbers because it added those to the right. So that's exactly what we want. Great. So now we can go back to we have done everything we need to here in Excel. Now we can close the script window and save our progress. Of course, we've done automatically actually. But now we can go back here and add the better savings so that we get the question. How long did you work with this? First, I refresh the data source so that we have the column that we want. And then I'm going to go here and add a new screen. And I'm just going to add a blank screen there. I rename that here to minutes worked. Right. And there I'm going to just add a text label first, just to describe what we're doing there. And then I'm just going to center that, make it slightly larger, 25 maybe. OK. Then we're going to add another gallery here. This gallery is going to include the choices I want to include for how long people have worked. So I don't want them to give a number. I just want them to click a button or tap a button very, very easily on the phone to get better data, basically. So uh, here I'm going to not select the data source for this, but I'm going to go in the items. I'm going to use the table function and just create a new table. And then I'll define the items in this table minutes 10 uh, as an object, of course. So there we go. That would be an object with one property. And then I do a comma on that. I'll just do a copy a bunch of these as uh, for as many alternatives as I want. So 20, 30, 45, uh, 60, 120. So basically, and you're into hours then. Something like that. So those are the alternatives that I want to have in my table. 
and then we close that parentheses. Now we have that table and I don't want a comma in the end there. So let's uh, show that formula there. Here we have a warning, what's that one? Yeah, it's just about performance, that's fine. We don't need to worry about that one now. Anyhow, so now we have that uh, set up. So let's move this away for the time being now and just make this a blank gallery. And in that gallery now, I'm gonna rename the gallery, call it minutes, minutes gallery. There I'm gonna insert a button. Now it's inside the gallery, that's exactly what I want. And then I go to the gallery, select that I want the wrap count to be two. So because I want two buttons next to each other. And then I want them to be slightly smaller like that. And then of course I want the template size. I want that to be just a hundred. There we go. So now I have my buttons in there and now I'm just going to select the text on each and every one to be this item minutes. There we go. So now I have my buttons with my alternatives. Now, once I have that, uh, I want to change the click code or the on select code here for each and every one. So let's go in and take that out of the button save task there. And here's the, the code that we have now. Now I just want to take all of that there and go to the button, do the on select, and we paste all of that. And then we continue with the update code here. You see the patch code, patching tasks, and we're not doing this item now, we're doing gallery one, a selected item. So selected, and then we're uh, continuing with the uh, minutes worked. And that's going to be this item because now we're in another gallery and that's going to be the minutes. So now we can just put a line break in there to make it a bit more beautiful. So we want to change this button save task because now it's not going to save the task anymore. It's going to go to a minutes screen. So instead of patching here, we're going to go navigate to minutes worked. Let's do a little animation there. Uh, cover right, sounds good. And, uh, then after we have saved, let's actually go back here then. After we've done that patch, then let's go on a navigate after that. Right, we need to have a semicolon there for it to work. Navigate, and then we navigate back to the screen one. And let's do a cover, uh, yeah, cover right also, that's good. All right, there we go. Now we can try if this actually works as it should. And let's go back to the first screen. So now if I click on send invoices, there, I get to this screen and I say, I've worked 45 minutes and now it's saving and then it goes back to the open tasks. I can do it again, 45 minutes again. Now I go back to my Excel spreadsheet here and there you see there's one with 45 there and here's another one with 45. So it's saving the data as it should. Uh, just one more thing I want to do before we finish this rather long with video now, and that is to actually make the whole thing clickable, not just this button here. It shouldn't be a check anymore because now it's not a check. It's now it should be a right navigation instead. All right, then it should, it should be back to that. And when I select anything inside this template, then it should navigate to the minutes worked. All right, so now let's try it again. Here we go. I'll click on the first one here and select 60 minutes just to do something different. And uh, by fruit, 240 minutes on that. And as you see, they're, they're disappearing as I go here, which of course is a nice feature. All right, let's look at that now. Here you see the 240 minutes for buying fruit is in there also, and I can see exactly who's been doing what. Here we have a problem with the date format, so I can just go here and select the format from a date, and put it there, and I can actually put it for the entire 
column, so that's gonna, not going to be a problem in the future. But that concludes my demo. We have added a minutes worked column. We have added another screen on my app and um, we've modified the Excel script and everything's working. Thank you for watching this demo.